PC, accounting for your future. We now wish to look at the topic called process costing. So let's see how it works then. So for the process costing, it will work, for example, in the oil industry. And also it will work in some of the industries where the value of the individual outputs are homogeneous. So that means they are the same standardized product and also they have the small value. For example, think about the oil industry. Of course, uh, I mean, the oil, I mean, per litre, you cannot easily identify one from each other. And also think about the paper clip, for example, of course, the paper clip, low value item, and also homogeneous products as well. So, for those industries, of course, if you want to produce the products, for example, the paper clip, it has to go through a series of processes before it becomes the actual finished goods. For example, we call it as the process one and then process two. And of course, before the process one, it will input the raw materials in there as well. So think about it this way. Think about it in the oil refining industry. So you've got the crude oil, we can call it the pure oil. So we're going to add the labour, add the additional material, and also add the overhead expenses related to that, going through, for example, the process one. So for example, we've input 100 litres of this pure oil, and perhaps at the end of the process one, we can only get, for example, 98 litres out of it. Yes, you can say that. Well, there will be 2 litres of loss. So, why do we 2 litres of loss here? Well, simply because, for example, um, the oil leaked over the ground, for example. Yes, that happened. That's normal as well, yeah? You agree with that? Because... We cannot expect the perfect situation to happen. So that's the reason why we always assume there will be inefficiency assist. For example, we input 100 litres of oil into process one, but perhaps two litres, uh, I mean, leak over the ground, for example. And that, as a result, we only get 98 litres of output at the end of the process one. So that two litres, as you can see here, will be the normal losses. Why are we going to say that it's a normal loss? It's simply because we expect that to happen in the first place. And as a result of it, of course, when we are, I mean, calculating the uh, output, for example, 98 litres, how are we going to account for that? Of course, we will introduce to you to the formula in a second. Next one then, for example, you've got the oil from the process number one and then you're going to further process it in the process number two, and at the end of it, you will get, for example, 90 litres out of it. So that means, for example, in this case, so from a process number one's perspective, you will expect two litres of normal losses. Because you will expect some oil will spread over the ground, fine. So in the process number two, you also expect two litres of losses, but actually, you can see here, there will be 8 litres of losses instead of 2. So that means it lost more than you thought in the first place. And as a result of it, this is the situation that we haven't expected at all. So that means you expect to lose 2 litres, but actually lose 8 litres. So how are we going to cheat those abnormal losses in the process account. And also, if you think about it this way, well, perhaps you've input 98 into a process 2. You will get, for example, 96 litres out of it. As a result of it, 2 litres of normal losses, yes, absolutely fine, but what if? that you can get 97 litres out of it. You expect to lose 2 litres, but you only lose 1 litre as a result. It loses 
less than you expect it in the first place. So as a result of it, of course, that one litre would cause the abnormal gain. So how are we going to cheat that as well? So those will be the, uh, I mean, the questions that we like to ask ourselves. And also, if you think about it this way, well, for example, at the end of process number two, that item has not been finished. So that will become the work in progress. Well, we can say that is the closing work in progress because it is something that we haven't finished at the end of the period. So, how we're going to account for those closing work in progress, or we can call it the C VIP for short. Now, of course, you can argue that well, at the end of the period, that's the C VIP. But what about for the next accounting period? Of course, that would become the opening work in progress in the next of accounting period. So how are we going to account for this as well? We can cast the OVIP. Those are the questions that we need to ask ourselves, of course. And of course, later on in the section, we'll also introduce to you the byproduct joint product, which means we put the materials in there and what sort of products that we can get as a result from it and uh, what is the extra product or bonus product we can get as a result of the processes as well and how we're going to account for those. So those would be the things that we're going to look at in a later section. But now let's focus upon these areas in turn. So before we move any further, as you can see in your notes, first of all, we are given the process account. So all we can do from your cost bookkeeping's perspective that you've studied before, all we can do is that we put the materials into process one and then the process one, I mean, we credit it so that it will go into process two. So that means for process one, we input the materials, labour and overhead on the daily side because we increases it. And at the end of which, we're going to transfer that to process two because the P2, that means that's the amount that we've put that here. And then we input the further materials, labour and overhead. And then, finally, we can have the output here. That's the finished goods. That's how process costing actually works. So, it's very, very important that we understand the concept for process costing to calculate the cost per unit here. Because if you think about it this way, well, you've input 100 litres uh, of oil at the start of the period, and you get 98 litres out of it. So 98 litres, what you need to do from the management accountant's perspective is to estimate the cost per unit. In this case, it's the cost, litre, cost per litre. For example, whether or not they actually worth $10 per litre or perhaps they actually worth $5 per litre. How are you going to calculate that cost then? So let me show you the comprehensive uh, example or basic example related to process costing called tone, this question. So first of all, we're going to calculate the cost per tonne of the output. And secondly, we're going to pro uh, I mean, record that into a process account. So let's see then. Tone has a process with a normal loss of 5%. So that means we expect that to lose 5% because of the inefficiency exists. We cannot expect the perfect thing to happen in the real life. Which can be sold for $5 per tonne. So that means, yes... This is the normal loss. Think about it in this way. If we are uh, in the oil refining industry, the oil is spread over the ground, and then what we can do is to collect them and sell it. Sell it at the discounted price. That's what we mean by scrap value. So, sold for $5 per tonne, so that would be the scrap value, or you can call it as the discounted price. Of course, both of these normal losses or the unexpected losses, that means the abnormal losses, can be sold at scrap value. No problem for that. We'll tell you how to do that account later on. In the piece, materials were 160 tones at $23 per ton. Fine. So you can calculate the total direct material cost. Labour and production overhead expenses related to it is to be $2,986. 
Yes, that will be the conversion cost during the period as well. So once we've input those raw materials and also conversion costs, how much outputs that we can get as a result from it? So we will assume that all losses were normal. We're going to ignore the abnormal losses in this uh, uh, here, but we'll discuss about that in a second. So don't worry. What's the cost of a tone uh, of the output then? Well, the answer for this is we will use the formula like this. All we can do is we will take what is the total cost that you've input in the process first of all. And because you've got those losses, as the normal losses as you can see, because you can sell that at a discounted price, you should reduce the cost that you should have in the first place. So that means we're going to minus the scrap value of those normal losses, or I can call it as the NL for short, and we're going to spread that total cost over the expects the outputs that we expect to happen in the first place. So that means what is the total expected output? Of course, we're going to minus the normal losses unit as well. Because we will think that well, we will lose that amount in the first place so that we don't take that into account. So, input costs. With inputs, as you can see, 160 tones at $23 each. And also we've got the labour and overhead is to be 2986 minus the scrap value, so it will be 5% for that. Well, we've input 160 tones. We will expect to get 95% of these 160 tones, yeah? We cannot expect to get 100 of that. So that means we're going to minus 5% times 160 tones. And we're going to divide by expected output, of course. 160 tones, but 5% that we cannot get. So that will give us the cost per tone of the output, in this case, is to be $43.5 per tone. So that's how we value the output. But why do we need that? Or well, we need that simply because we need to we need to recall the process account here. So let me show you here. My drawings is really about process account with debit on the left and credit on the right. So what we can do then is we're going to input all of these materials as well as the conversion costs on the debit side because we put into the process. At the end of it, we extract it as the output from the credit side in the process account. So that means we've input the direct material of 160 tons. Total value, of course, we're going to times $23 per tone. So that would give us $3,680. So what we need to do then for the materials only, we're going to show the quantity. And then we show the total monetary value at the end of it. And also we've got the direct labour as well as the overhead expenses, we're going to cost the conversion cost in total because we convert that raw materials into, into the finished goods at the total value of 2986 We're totally the question. We haven't got the quantity for that because quantity is only applicable for the materials. So that means, as you can see, if it's perfect, efficient, we'll get 160 out because we input 160 tones at the start. Total value is to be 6,666. But first of all, we've got the output. 
we are told there will be 5% of losses. That will be the normal loss. So the normal loss will get 5% of this 160 tones. So that will give us 8 tones here. So that means we've got 160 tones in total. We lose 8. So the balancing figure here will be 152 tones. That means we will expect to get 152 tones as the total output. So normal losses, as you can see, we can sell it for five dollars per ton. That will give us forty dollars. And there's the total output. Of course, all we can do is we're going to times the cost per ton of the output. That would just calculate it. It's to be forty-three point five dollars per ton. So that will give us a total figure of 6,626. If we add them down together, 6,666. Six, six. That's it. That's all we need to do with it. But here's the question. Well, Steve, you've converted that direct material conversion cost into the output, no problem. But what about for the normal losses? Because you scrap that. That means you sell it to somebody else. So that means you have to open up another account called scrap value. With Debbie on the left and Craig on the right. So, because you credit the process account, that means you debit the scrap account. So, first of all, let's, let me just write out a journal. I think the best way to tackle the process costing question is to write out your accounting journal. So, that means we credit the process account for $40 because it appears on the credit side. So that's why we close the process account. So according to the double entry effect, we should debit the scrap account for $40. Scrap account is just the account putting all the things, bits and pieces in there. And then finally, we are going to extract that to the bank balances. We'll show you how in a second. So that means in the scrap account, all we can do is to say that, well, we credit the process account and debit the scrap for 40. And as a result, I told you that we are going to, I mean, the ending balance for the scrap account should go into the bank account. So that means we've got $40 on the debit side. All we can do at the end of it, she's going to credit to remove the scrap account because that doesn't make sense in our accounting record. And then we are posting that into the bank because we're going to sell it to somebody else and get the cash, hopefully. That means we credit scrap value and then we debit the bank for $40. So it balances, doesn't it? There you have it. That's how we deal with it. I hope this is not rocket science. Make sure you're going to practice this question. Practice makes perfect in the process account questions. They have to do that. Of course, we've got normal losses. We've got abnormal losses. Uh, uh, I mean, we've got the abnormal gain as well. So the accounting achievements will be those. Uh, but the best way to look at this, from my perspective, is to go through a particular question so you know exactly how we deal with it together. Let's now take a look at the question called DD Limited. DD Limited, okay, you see, is within your note. Requirements, as you can see, we've got quite a few requirements in there. We can't, first of all, finish the process one account and then process two accounts and then abnormal gains or losses account. And finally, the scrap value account, which is kind of the, uh, I mean, it starts the normal losses and also abnormal losses and abnormal gain together. Because all, they will all affect the scrap value. Let's see them. 
DD Limited produces plastic and expect a 10% of normal losses in the production. Yeah, fine. Normal losses. We know what's going on because it, it is the inefficiency. We know that at the end of it, we are going to extract that to the bank, bank balances. That's it. Each scrap unit makes $0.5 from a process one. Yeah, we know that is the same price. We get the catch of 0 0.5 those, for those losses. And then $3 from the process two. And as you can see, it's saying each scrap unit. And that means not only is referring to the normal losses, but also it's referring to the not abnormal losses that we can sell it. That's why we're going to cheat that here. We're going to put that into the scrap account in a second. So, we've input the raw materials into a process one, and then from a process one, going through to another process two, so that will give us the output here. That's all you need to know. And then within the process one, we've input direct materials is to be 2,000 kilos, and the process two, 1,250 kilos, and the total cost for direct materials to be 8,100 for the process one, with 1,900 for the process two. So that's the reason why we're going to put that in a second. Also, we've got the direct labour, production overhead, and then we've got the output to the process too. As you can see, we've input 2,000, but we can only get 1,750. Why this is the case? We'll show you in a second. So, let me just to do it. Question DD Limited. First of all, the process one account. Debits and credit. Within the process one, we've input the raw material of 2,000 kilos. For a total of $8,100. For direct labour, we've got 4000 We have no quantity for direct labour, okay? Because we only got the quantity related to the material, related to the product. And also we got the production overhead expenses, and we are told it to be 150% of the direct labour. Yeah, the examiner wants you to calculate that for me. It's just a bit of basic mathematical skills that you need to know. So that means it's to be 150% times 4,000 in the direct labour. And that gives us six thousand dollars here. Okay. So that means in the process one, we've input two thousand kilos here, and the total value, as you can see, is to be eighteen thousand hundred dollars. What else that we are told? Output to process two is to be 1,750. Yep, yeah, that's the output for quantity and the monetary value, 1,750 kilos. If we can estimate that cost per unit, that we just show that in the calculation later on, we can calculate the total cost related to the output here. And also we are told at the start of the question, we will expect, yeah, 10% of normal losses. Okay, so that means the normal losses, the quantity, we input 2,000 there, and we expect to lose 10%. So that means it's to be 200 kilos. Of course, we are told that we are going to make the scrap of 0 0.5 because we're going to sell it to somebody else who prefers to buy from me. Okay. Times 0 0.5 dollars per quantity. Kilos. So that gives us $100. For the normal losses. 
Oh, as you can see, the total is to be 2,000 kilos here. But we will get 1,750 kilos as the output. We will lose 200, fine. So we add it up, it's to be 1,950, yeah? But total we should get 2,000. And that means we will lose another 50 kilos of the raw materials. That is the abnormal loss. That's the balancing figure for the remaining 50 kilos. Well, here's the question for you then. Should we take 50 kilos times the cost of the output or should we take 50 kilos times the scrap value of this 0.5. What do you think? Well, the logic is this. For the abnormal losses in the process account, for example, the process 1 or the process 2, all we need to do is we need to times the cost per unit. Why this is the case? Well, abnormal loss or abnormal gain, we know that if we are at the end of the process. If we are at the end of the process, all the things have happened in the first place, yes, we know what's going on. We know the result. We know how many items that we lost. So we can calculate that abnormal losses or abnormal gain only when we are at the end of it. And as a result of it, we don't expect that to happen in the first place. We don't expect that we will lose 50 kilos. We expect that we will not lose that 50 kilos. So that we're going to apply that cost per unit as for the expected cost. And that's the reason why we're going to I mean, apply the costs per kilos in this particular case. I hope this is clear. So let me just to calculate the cost per kilo. So the way that we calculate it, we're going to take the input cost minus the scrap for normal losses and we're going to divide by the expected output minus the um, normal losses again. So in this case, the input cost, as you can see, you take these three figures times together, yeah? Because it's the material and conversion costs. Or, as you can see, we've done that already, it's to be $18,100. A square value for a normal of this, as you can see, we've just done it already. Yes, it's to be $100, because we will lose 200 scrap it for 0.5. So, we will expect to get 2,000 if it's perfect, but we will lose the normal loss of 200. We don't take into account the abnormal losses because this figure will not be known, yes, will not uh, be for sure at the end of the period. So that means we calculate this before the abnormal losses takes place. So that means the expected output is to be 2,000 kilos minus 200 kilos. So that will give us $10 per kilo here. So all we can do is to apply that $10 in these two areas for the, for the normal output as well as the abnormal losses. So that will give us 17,500 and then $500 here. So at the, at the end of it, as you can see, we add it up together, it's to be 18,100. Absolutely fantastic. But here's the complication comes in. Oh, Steve, as you can see, we convert We've convert 
the direct material labor and overhead into the outputs, no problem for that whatsoever. So every day we has the credit side. But what about for normal losses? Is worth the abnormal losses then? Because all we can do is we credit the process account here, but we haven't debited something. So that's the reason why we're going to do that. First of all, normal loss account, or we can call it as the scrap value account. With debits and credits, because all I said to you before, I'm just going to use the double entry. Okay, for a normal loss, all we can do is we're going to credit the process one account worth 400, and we're going to debit the scrap account worth 100. And the ending balance for the scrap account, you know that, goes into the bank balances because we've sold that for money. We love money, yeah? At least I love money. Anyway, with debits, the scrap and credits, the process one account for $100. What about for the abnormal losses then? First of all, for the abnormal losses, we credit the process account for 500 and that's the reason why we're going to debit to the abnormal loss account it's in the p and for another 500 so that's the reason why we are going to create that account right now why not just for fun so let's create the abnormal loss or gay account we're going to put that into the same pot of loss with debit on the left and credit on the right. So as we can see in the process once, the abnormal loss is on the credit side of the process one account of 500. So the first journal that we're going to do is we're going to credit the process one account for a total of 500. And we're going to put that into the abnormal loss account worth of 500. So let's put that down here. So pros is one account worth of 500. But at the same time, that abnormal loss is a loss that can be sold at a scrap value. And in the question, the scrap value is to be 0.5. So the second journal that we can do is we're going to sell the 50 kilos at a scrap of 0.5. So we debit the scrap account 50 kilos times 0.5 dollars per kilo worth 25. And because that we sell that money and as a result of it we will surely remove the losses. So we credit the abnormal loss worth of 25. So now let's put this into the T accounting. Okay, so we debit the scrap for 25. And then we credit the abnormal losses account and debit the scrap for $25. Okay, job done. So as you can see, let me just remind you for the double entry related to this. For normal losses, all we can do is to simply put that into a scrap account, job done. I'm going to remove that from a process account. But for the abnormal losses, two account achievements. First of all, we de-recognize it from the process account and we will put that into the abnormal losses account into the PL. And secondly, as you can see, we're going to sell it for money. That's the reason why the money 
will cancel the losses that we suffered. So that's the reason why we're going to create the abnormal losses to remove parts of it. And we'll put that into a scrap account because we're going to get the money as a result from it. Okay, so now let's look at the process number two, shall we? With debit and credit. So, for process number two then, so now let's look back to the question here. If we input 1,250 kilos of the direct material, costing us 1,900, And we've also got the direct labour worth of these 10,000. And also we've got the production overhead is 120% of the direct labour. Ah, we've also got from the process one, as you can remember, because we've extracted that into process two as the output. Because all we can do is the materials go through the process one and then go into process two and finally becomes the finished good. Hopefully. And that's the reason why from the process one, is the total of 1,750 kilos worth of a thousand, oh, sorry, $17,500 here. Am I right? Yes, I'm correct. Okay. So, as you can see, if we total them up together, so that would give you 3,000 kilos worth of these, um, it's approximately 42, or perhaps is 41,000 400. Here's the thing. The output to the finished goods is to be 2,800. Okay, so we say the output is 2,800 kilos. All we can do is going to times the cost of the kilos, so it can give us the total cost for the output. No problem for that. But also we will get the normal losses here. The normal loss, as you can see at the start of the question, is to be 10% in the production. Okay, so 10% of this input of 3,000 in total. So that gives us 300 kilos for the normal loss. Ah, we are also told we will get $3 from the process too for the scrap value, so that means we will sell it for $3. Not free of charge. Okay, so that would give us 900, no problem. But if we add it up together, so that would give us 3,100 kilos. Hmm, here's the thing. You expect to lose 300 kilos as the normal loss, but actually, you've input 3,000 and get 2,800 out. So that means you only lose 200 kilos. And that means you expect to lose 300. But actually, you only lose 200 kilos. That means, is this an abnormal gain? But the answer for that is absolutely yes. 
it's abnormal. It's because perhaps it's the improvement in the technology, improvement in the quality of the material, or perhaps economies of scale as a result of it. You've lost less than you expect. Well, I'm not saying that we're inputting 3,000 kilos and then we've get, we will get a hundred, a, I mean, additional 100 kilos out from it. No, this does not happen. We input 100%. We'll get 100% out of it as in the perfect situation. But in this case, we lose less than the normal losses. As a result of it, it's the abnormal gain. So for the abnormal gain, as you can see, it's the 3,100 kilos. It's greater than the 3,000 on the left-hand side. And that means we're going to put the abnormal gain onto the debit side of 100 kilos. Okay, for that. Of course, we're going to times the cost of the output, and it will give us the total figure there. So let's see how we're going to do this then. So first of all, the cost per kilo. We're going to take the total input costs minus the scrap value for normal losses and then we will divide by the expected output minus the normal losses. So let's see then. A total input costs all we can do is we're gonna plus all these bits and pieces together. Ah, I've done that already. 41,400. Okay. The square value for normal losses, as you can see, we just calculate it as well for 900 here. What is the total units that we expect to get from the process? As you can see, we will expect to get only 3,000 because we've input 3,000 uh, normal losses to be 300. So that would give us $15 per kilo. Apply that, $15. into here, 1,500, and then total is to be 42,000. And then if we add those up, now just to remove it, if we add those down together, as you can see, it's to be 3,100 kilos, and then 42,900, it balances. Congratulations. Okay. That's how we deal with it. But remember, this is not the end of the day. Because all we need to do then is we have cheated all those direct labour material overhead and also the process number one that counts into the output. We've done all of these bits and pieces already. But what about for the norm, normal losses as well as the abnormal gain then? Well for a normal loss all we need to do then is we credit the process to account for this 900 and we debit the scrap account for 900. We have credited that already now let's debit the scrap account. So, the process two account, 300 kilos, 900 in the scrap value account. Fine. Now, here's the interesting bit. Abnormal gain. How are we going to do that? 
Of course, first of all, we debit the proceeds account already. And the credit side, of course, we're going to credit to the abnormal gains account. So number one, we've debited the process to account. So this is 1,500, and we're going to credit to the abnormal gain account of 1,500. We've debited that already. Now let's credit that into the PO. So, credit up normal gain from the process to account. Uh, for this, 100 kilos, and then 1,500. I said to use the number one, so that means we've also got the number two. For this, 100 kilos, or we are toting a question, we can sell it for three dollars as a scrap because. For example, think about the um, plastic. Yes, it's the inefficiency, spread onto the ground, and then we collect them and sell it at a discounted price for three dollars. And that means all we need to do then, here's the thing. For the abnormal loss, is the faulted product that we can sell at a discounted price. But what about for the gain? Of course, we cannot sell a gain because we have enjoyed that gain already. That means we get more than we expected. And as a result of it, from a management accounting's perspective, we will cheat that as the opportunity cost to a company. Because as you can see, you've got a gain worth of 15. That means you've lost the chance to sell it at $3. And that means if we've got the abnormal gain, all we need to do is going to cheat that as the opportunity cost. All we can do is we're going to reduce the abnormal gain account of this 100 kilos. We could have sold it for $3 per kilo, but we haven't. 300 And we credit this scrap value account for 300 So, let's see then. We debit the abnormal gain and then credit the scrap for 300. And then in the scrap, we credit the scrap and debit the abnormal gain to reduce the scrap value a little bit. Okay, that's the end of the story. Is it? Or perhaps the answer for that is no, because we haven't closed off the account for the scrap value as well as the abnormal losses and gain. That's the reason why, first of all, for the scrap value, clearly the debit balance is greater than the credit balance. That means the balancing figure would be the bank. And as a result of it, it should be. 725. So that means we're going to credit the scrap value account for 725 and we debit the bank for 725 dollars. What about for the abnormal losses or gain? Of course, I said to you, this is the ending balance should appear in the statement of loss. So, on the right hand side, 1,525 would be greater than the left hand side. So that means there will be a balancing figure here. We're going to put that into the statement of loss. And that would become um, a total figure of 725. As a balancing figure, we're going to put that into a stamp of loss. So, whether this is the gain or loss. Well, in a PL, if you debit it, of course, as, as you can see, 500, 300, that would be the expense. But you credit it, as you can see, we've got $1,525 worth of gain. So, it's $1,525 worth of gain. 
which is more than the cost worth Bay Hong Xin total, and that means we will have the balancing figure appearing although on the debit side of 725, but it does relate to the gain that we can get. Okay. Right, so do you have it? I hope this is not that difficult. So in this section so far, we're assuming that we input the raw materials in the process at the end of which we will get the finished goods out, which is completed. So in the next of our section, we are going to introduce to the situation where we've input the raw materials in into the process at the end of which when we get out from it, that product is not finished yet. So if that's the case, that will become the work in progress. How are we going to cheat that? So see you in the next section. APC, accounting for your future.